from the Sky News Centre at 12. Downing Street says Theresa May is outraged by what it calls North Korea's reckless provocation over its latest missile test. The regime fired the weapon through the skies over northern Japan. Japanese Premier Shinzo Abe has called it the greatest ever threat to his country. Dr John Nielsen's an expert on Asian diplomacy. I think the Prime Minister's words demonstrate his serious concern and I think his increasing frustration at the inability of the international community to find a way of deterring North Korea. Kim Jong-un has listened to Donald Trump and believes that the president is bluffing. The European Commission president is criticising Theresa May over her handling of Brexit. I did read with the requisite attention all the papers produced by Her Majesty's government, but none of those are in fact satisfactory. There are still an enormous amount of issues that need to be settled. Jean-Claude Juncker insists those topics need to be agreed before negotiations on a trade deal can begin, but the Prime Minister's spokesperson insists the government thinks Brexit talks are in a good place. President Trump's promising help fast to as many as half a million people who may need it after Hurricane Harvey. He's due to visit Texas later. Around 30,000 people's homes there are underwater with more heavy rain to come. A British woman's been raped on a beach in Mallorca. Police in Magaluf are searching for three men. She says attacked her in the Punta Bolina area on Friday night. In football, Naby Keita says he's excited to join Liverpool after the club confirmed the deal to take him to Anfield next summer. The midfielder will move from German team RB Leipzig for around £48 million. Liverpool have broken their transfer record to sign him. And England's cricketers are pushing for wickets to try to wrap up a win over the West Indies on the final day of the second test at Headingley. A short while ago, their opponents had moved on to 39 without loss, chasing 322 for victory. That's the latest. I'm Barry Weir. Up to date and on the pulse, this is Hope FM. Well, that's Sir Chris Tomlin there and home. And welcome to this very special broadcast on Hope FM. Now, you will know, like me, that during the course of his- history, there's been v- terrible atrocities in the world. Of course, we think of Hitler and the, and the genocide there, the Holocaust. But today we turn our attention to the land of Chile and to the regime of General Augustus Pinochet. There were some who survived that terrible time. And I'm very pleased and honoured to welcome into the studio uh, today uh, Violetta, Aunt Violetta, actually, because she's aunt to Alexander Violetta. She was a child, but her father went through uh, imprisonment, uh, terrible injustice, and she's here to tell her story. Alexander takes those atrocities and has brought them alive, made them very real through his artwork. And in fact, this week on Friday, a new exhibition opens at the BIC uh, in Bournemouth, and it's entitled Sins of the World. But to get us started today, some music, and what could be more appropriate than Bruce Springsteen, and we shall overcome. Well, that's uh, Bruce Springsteen there, and of course, we shall overcome. You're listening to Hope FM, and I'm delighted to welcome into the studio Alexander Dakers. Good afternoon to you. Good afternoon. Yeah. Yeah. Now, obviously, your big exhibition is going to open uh, this Friday at the BIC. Uh, Just say a little bit about the inspiration behind it. Oh, no. um, well, the inspiration behind the exhibition, um, Sins of the World, starts right back in my first exhibition at the Norfolk Royal um, many years ago. Um, and the inspiration behind that is the events that affected the, my family um, during the Augusto Pinochet regime in Chile, in Santiago, um, in which the, our family were affected about it. And it's fantastic as well that... Uh, Later on in this interview, that my aunt's actually here to talk about it, about the events that actually happened from her perspective. So that inspired me. My family inspired me, and uh, Amnesty International. I've got a great soft spot for the charity, and I think it's very important that um, what the good work that they do is recognised and recognised properly. Some people say it's really important to remember. You know, whenever we've gone through these really bad times of people, tremendous suffering, like like the Holocaust. Uh, it's very, very important that we never forget. Others would say we should forgive and forget. What's your view? That's a very tough question. I think um, I am all for forgiving in many aspects because um, there's so many events that have happened in the world that you need to forgive 
people that are forced into certain things that they don't want to be in. However, I think when it comes to an, a dictatorship of like Augusto Pinochet or a Saddam Hussein or something like that in the past or a Hitler, I think that is where there is no forgiveness on that. That is a massive responsibility for what he has done. And it's a, it's a criminal offence, what he has done to many people, now, and in, taking their life away. In Pinochet's case, I mean, he ruled over Chile for quite a few years, from 73 right the way through until 1990. How did he survive for such a long time in a country which clearly he was putting through hell? Well, he survived, obviously, because uh, people are brainwashed, um, like they were uh, under um, uh, um, Adolf Hitler, exactly the same. They, they believe in a product that's there, and then there comes a, a conflict with the, the normal families that are living in, in a place like Santiago in Chile, and they are the ones that are unfortunately going to suffer it, because the people follow and, and believe in a strong leader, but he wasn't really a strong leader. The real strong leader in Chile at that time was Salvador Allende. He was a strong leader. And he had great people like my grandfather, Leopoldo Osorio, involved in it. And these are the people that should have really continued the good work they were doing for the people of Chile. But of course, they would have been a threat to Pinochet. Yes, they were a massive threat to the Pinochet. Which, of yeah. course, is why he then did what he did. Yes, exactly. And, and what he did was, was, I mean, there's something like 200,000 people that were exiled, 30,000 more slaughtered, you know, through genocide of one kind or another, anyone who was anyone anything like a threat was was effectively removed, and and of course he got off with it because he he never came to trial. No, I think it was very sad the situation that he never came to trial because when he came to Britain when he was not very well, he was um, he was in, in our land. And Margaret Thatcher um, decided to send him back as a, in, in peaceful uh, society back into Chile. However, I do think that was unacceptable when he was responsible not just for the people of Chile but for families that were in Spain that deserved to see the man on trial to see what happened to their loved ones. Um, and many of our family actually were outside London protesting about things like that. Not only just our family, but a lot of Chilean people were protesting at that time. And I think that was a very poor decision from our government and what they did. I know Margaret Thatcher goes on that Pinochet helped the Falklands War and things like that. However, he is responsible for other people and other incidents that happened and you cannot um, brush that under the table. That's just not acceptable. Of course, this is where politics tends to get in the way, isn't it? Yes, it does, yeah. Now, you, clearly you're, you, you're not Chilean in the sense that you weren't born there, but you're... You're, you've got that blood running through you. When, when was it that you first began to be educated, to, to learn about what your family had gone through? I think it was why I remember many times my personal uh, opinion was when Christmas arrived and my aunt was actually next to me and we were eating Brussels sprouts in Turkey. <laughs> I had my, uh, my grandfather was there. The whole family was very close um, together. And he spoke about it. Uh, I, I, I overheard a few bits and pieces and then I asked my mother about it and then I actually went to my first Amnesty International meeting and I learnt an awful lot about the events in Chile and also other events around the world that, um, that Amnesty International support and then I remember you, um, going around with the yellow tin and raising money actually with my aunt and my mum at the time to raise money for Amnesty International so I learned at a young age and um, I'm fully supportive of, of, of what they do well, let's have some more music and then we'll come back and we'll talk to Aunt uh, Violetta. Looking forward to that. And this, of course, is Aretha Franklin, Through the Storm. That's the amazing Aretha Franklin. And through the storm, <laughs> you're listening to Hope FM. I'm Blair Crawford, and my special guest in the studio today, Alexander Dakers, and Aunt Violetta. Uh, welcome, Aunt Violetta, to Bournemouth on this lovely sunny day. Oh, thanks very much. Yeah. Now, you were, of course, born in Chile, and so therefore you, you really lived through most of this terrible regime of Pinochet, although I guess that you don't remember all of it. But when, when did these terrible things first come to your, your attention from, you know, from being a child? When, when did you first become aware? Um, there are a lot of things that you kind of um, forget 
um, and you don't really understand what's happening. Uh, when you're so young, you don't know exactly what's going on. And um, when you see so many changes and you see people, you know, being killed in front of you uh, or torture, you hear and, and you just, you, you, your mind doesn't understand what is actually happening. Um, we we have my my dad was very much involved in politics and all his life he has become he had been a socialist man with ideas of um of wanting to improve people's life um he didn't never wanted to show to anybody that we were rich we we didn't have enough money but he would make sure that other people would have everything um, it was difficult for us to understand, as I said earlier on, to really understand what was actually happening. I, mean, I was really young, and I just remember I was at the school on that day. We heard a lot of planes and helicopters, and we heard machine guns, and we didn't know what it was all about. How, how old were you then? I was about 13 years of age, and... and, and to think about now, it's like we did so well just to kind of get out of of where we were at that time because um, we were told by the school that there was something really terrible was happening and we were really young to understand what was they were meaning. And I remember we were start crying and... And it was awful to see people crying because we didn't know what was going on. We didn't know if we were going to survive, what was happening. And one of the nuns took me out and she, she called me out and she said to me, your dad is dead. And I started crying and I said, no, no, that's not true because as I remember seeing my dad this morning. No, she said she, she, he was killed. I just remember running through with these passages and screaming myself because I saw no, it couldn't have happened to my dad. Now, of course, your father wasn't dead. He wasn't. But he had challenged the regime and he continued to challenge it yes. for a long time and yes. he, he paid the price for that. Yes. Uh, tell us something about that price that he paid. Okay, my, my, dad, my dad always believed that, you know, he did nothing wrong. It was them, you know, with the help of America. They provide the arms, they provide the service, and they give so much money to a, a poor country like Chile that people were not prepared to, to go into a battle. There was nothing to defend. And until the last minute, President Allende, it was in in La Moneda, waiting, waiting for people to come and help. But no, nobody turned up, nobody did have arms, there was nothing. So the fact that they, they say that he killed himself is not true. You know, he was a very brave man, he would have, he would have not killed himself, he was killed, he was assassinated inside La Moneda, and we know that. Thanks God, my dad wasn't that day working at the Moneda. He was, he was around looking for his friend, trying to find out what he, else he could have done for people to save their life. And that was the time when he was out and about trying to protect others. He was, he, they, he was a stop and taken prisoner. Now, wh wh how, how many years after was that? Was that pretty much immediate, or was it some time afterwards that he was he was taken prisoner and, of course, imprisoned for was it thirty years? Yeah, uh, originally it was thirty years. Now, because because the, my dad um, knew so many people and done so many good things to people, very poor people previously. When he was put in a line there and was told, okay, you go there, you go to the stadium, you go to the car, uh, to the jail, my dad was quite lucky that 
some people he have actually helped in the past said to him, I think I know you. You did so well, you helped me, and I'm going to help you. Because of those people and because of my dad's strong belief on, on, you know, on, on being honest, you know, a good guy, they, they helped him. They, they didn't take him to the stadium because if you were going to the stadium, you're not coming back. And of course, on that day, th- that there were thousands and thousands yes. of people annihilated in the stadium. Yes, yes, and 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 the fact that a lot of people, they didn't know what was going to happen to them. You know, women and and young children, they were actually being taken there. You know, with their families, and and the fact that people actually they were executed in front of others. You know. There was no, oh, please, wait, wait, I've got a family. No, you were executed. Everybody who was taken, they, they, they presumed that you were a communist. But people had ideals. You know, they say, oh, you know, I, I voted for Salvador Allende because he will give us a better life. But they were not much involved in politics, some of the people. No, they just saw a possible way yeah. out of where they yeah. were, yeah. Yes, mm. yes. Well, let's have some more music, okay. and, uh, and we'll come back to the story. This, is, uh, this land is your land. This land is my land, and Chile is a land, of course, that you were proud to be born in, and yes. still are proud to be part of. Butters. This land was made for you and me. This land is your land. This land is my land. Of course, referring in the song there to the USA. But today, our focus is on the land of Chile and the terrible, terrible atrocities that happened uh, under the administration of Augustus Pinochet. And we're talking about uh, those who survived. And and one of those survivors was Aunt Violetta, uh, who's with us here uh, in the studio. And, of course, to Alexander Dakers, who we will hear from again. (laughs) A wee bit later in the programme, uh, as he talks about uh, about his his artwork in the exhibition, which is opening later this week. And Violetta, there's something that you you were referring to that has been on your mind over the years. And of course, you were saying that sometimes when you recollect on these things, some things are clear, some things perhaps a little bit less clear. But what is it that has that has been pressing on your mind as you've recollected? Okay. Um I remember this particular day, we, we had a little shop, my mum used to run a little shop for us, and she, she went out that day, like normal, she went out to get a, a couple of things, and she left me and someone else in charge of the shop. Everything was fine until we see this car stopping in front of the shop, two men dressed up in suit came in front, in, came and approached us, and one of them, particularly one of them, put his hands behind his uh, jacket and showed me that he had a gun. Now, he said, now, you come with me, and you leave your friend here with the other man. He, He made me walk in front, and he said, okay, now tell me, where does your dad keep all the guns? Where is that communist man? Where, tell me where, where, where is the gun? He started opening everything in front of me. I didn't know what it was, what he was looking for. You didn't know what he was talking about, did no, you? No, no, because at that age you just don't know. Ah, and how old were you? I was quite young. I think I might have been about 12. Mm-hmm. And, well, that's why I remember. And, and he, and I remember he opening this cupboard and he, f- he found these books that we had. Uh, they were literature, li- like Pablo, M- Pablo Neruda, who was a poet, uh, Fidel Castro, biography, and a couple of things that yeah. were normal History reading. Books, yeah. 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 So he looked at me and he said, OK, I'm going to tell you one thing. All this will have to be burned. Because we don't want communist people like you no more in this country. And if you and if you, tell your mom, if she doesn't do it, I'm going to come back and since they will never be the same for you all. When someone tells you that, you're just so panicking. Mm. You just don't know. As soon as my mom comes, 
my mom knew that something more had happened. But she worried that my mom had happened something more else, because in the way I was so terrified. And um, and then she came back and she said, I explained to her, and she I remember she picking up all these books on her hands, and she said, we got to get rid of everything, because this cannot happen to us. And, and let me just mention that my, my mom passed away uh, nearly two years ago. It's been very difficult for us. She was a, a rock of our family. Yes, I understand. Well, let's have some music. I know it's quite difficult to talk and recall about these things, and Violetta is, is doing a great job. I'm going to talk to, to Alexander again in a moment because, obviously, he has taken the memories and the stories that has been shared with him. And in order to make them come alive, to help people like you and I understand, has put that into artwork. And that exhibition is opening on f- this coming Friday at the Bournemouth International Centre. It is a free exhibition, and we'll tell you more about that. But just now, the Eagles, you are not alone. That's uh, You Are Not Alone There from the Eagles turning the clock back a wee bit there. Now, Alexander, I mean, obviously you've been listening in and your aunt has been recalling part of the of the terrible things that, that she remembers. You wanted to do something about it. You didn't want this story to get lost. So what did you do? Uh, of course, um, it's very hard to talk, actually, after my aunt speaking, which is f- from the heart. Um and I have to say that our grandmother will be proud of her as of now from above. Um, that's really important to say before I start that next part. I think uh, the inspiration is, uh, with the art uh, came in because um, I cannot forget the events that happened to our family and it destroyed our family um, and the family has done very well to uh, come back together. Um, but with the art, it shows all the powerful events that happened in Chile. It also shows other events around the world that have affected other people, like in, in Syria and things like that as well. And um, I re- really want people to remember these events. And it's not about who did this and who did that, as I spoke to many people about. It's about the families that died and the people that lost their loved ones. Now, you have put this, of course, into your latest exhibition, uh, Sins of the World. It's an interesting title. Why is that? Well, uh, Sins of the World is um, it's an awkward title to think of for the show, but I'm with all the London art that I started in, down in London. I was asked to do some dramatic uh, paintings, so they, they liked the, the Chilean art that was show, displayed at the Strand Gallery. So I started to think of a title, how I was going to do it, and Sins of the World... Um, hits the events that we have that have affected the world but in in natural title it's sins of the world and at the bottom says our world so it's our responsibility so it's not just about chile it's no. about you know things generally going wrong exactly well the, the world. thing is like the one the you you will see the political art that was displayed in uh, about chile at the show uh, at the bic but there's also the other events that happened around the world like 9 11 um Auschwitz um, with the, the assassination of the Jews and the Polish which was a terrible thing that happened there and many other events um, that affected people and their loved ones Now when people look at your artwork uh, and, and let's just focus on the Chilean artwork for the moment because that's the story that your aunt has been telling when they look at what you depict uh, in, on the canvas what sort of reaction do you get? I think usually when people see it, and I've had this with Nigel Hedges, who spoke about it last time, is that um, it's a it's it's a shock. It's not a piece of work that you're going to um, applaud because it's sad, it's depressing, but it's um, it's realistic and it's exactly what happened to the people, and it it shows uh, it'll make you think. And it'll make you think, what what on earth happened in Chile? Um, that was what I wanted to hit with the political art of Chile. So it, 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 it has the desired effect, because you want the story to be kept alive. 
don't I, you? I think the family have to have is, is stayed alive. And I think it's not just my family, it's many other families in Chile and in Spain who lost their loved ones will be talking about that till the day they die. So these things cannot be forgotten. But of course, what all these things point to is terrible injustice, you mm. know, and particularly, of course, when you get politics involved and, and people can be their whole lives, really, and, and not see a resolution. And, and in, in some ways, the, those terrible years in Chile um, were, have never really been resolved, have they? And, and, and I guess, in a way, all we can really do is to point to say this was an injustice that should really never happen again. True. Well, I think that's very important what you said there. I think it's also important that the younger generation of today see these events and what happened and, and look a bit about history because the British public do not know a lot about the events in Chile because we are, we're too focused about the events that hit our country like the World War etc. However, the events in Chile were a, a massive um, problem for many people of South America and they, we, can't, we have to remember these things but if the younger generation sees that and, re, and search, searches history a little bit they will um, hopefully get a, a more peaceful world to live in because unfortunately at the moment we are still going in the wrong direction but I think we need to start changing the perspective of the younger generation and, and, and make the world more easier for everyone to live in. Have you been back to Chile? I haven't been in Chile at all. I'm the only member of the family that hasn't been there, but I've got a fan base down there, but I haven't been there yet. <laughs> and what about Andrea Lessa? Have you been back to Chile? Yes, recently, yes. So yeah. what's it like now? Um, it's, it's, it's a modern country. Um, what actually happened years ago, the new generation does not know what happened. Uh, it's quite sad because um, the older generation is still... Um, You're carrying it with yeah, you, aren't yeah, you? Yes, yes, and you, you hear the younger generation not even taking that topic, uh, and they don't really understand what actually happened. So yeah. it's, it, it, it is a bit sad, um, but, but Chile is still a country with which you got freedom, you know. Now you got freedom of uh, speech, which we never had before, and... And I just wanted to kind of, can I bring in to my, my dad here? Because Absolutely, I, because really yes. we need to honour your father, don't we? Because yes, he, he yes. paid a great price. So um, how would you honour him? My dad is a very special man. Um, what he did all his life, you know, protect the poor, wanted to do a lot more for people. He, he fought for the right... He paid f to go in jail, and he was tortured. And recently, when we have a conversation after so many years, I asked him, I said, Dad, what actually happened to you? What did they do to you? And he said to me, they did really bad. They harmed me a lot, and, and they beat me up. It's not only physically, it's m mentally. The person suffer. And then I said, why didn't you know wanted to talk to us before? He said, no, 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 those things, they will stay with me forever. And I, and I said, what, tell me more. And then he came up with this. He said, they were used to be, you know, together in, the, in jail, a, a couple of them. And then suddenly they start taking one by one away. And they were, within, some of them, they didn't come back. And he can hear screamings and, you know. People yes. being tortured. Fl flashbacks. Yes. And then, and then one day he was taken away. And everybody said, oh my God, what is going to happen to you now? And what happened, he was, he was put in a, room, in a little tiny room isolated to make him suffer more. And in that room he didn't have nothing. He, he, he had no light, no windows, nothing. And he was left there for 12 days. And my question to him, I said, Dad, how did you survive? How did you survive? You need to be a very strong man to survive. He said, I used to do quite a lot of exercise to keep me myself in good Fit. health. Yep. Yes. And every morning, he said, they used to open the door and they used to use the hose with cold water. And they used to do it on me, water me. But these people... They didn't, they didn't win anything doing that because his belief continued being 
how he is, is a, is a man who will always be a proper politician, a respectful man for everybody respect him, and a, a wonderful father. And I just want to say that thank you. Thank you for, you know, bringing us into the world and making life so wonderful for us in a way. Well, of course, it's true that the sacrifices of your yes. father yes. and people like him yes. have made Chile what it is today. That's right. And, of course, the sad reality is that many people, of course, won't, won't know that. That's right. Uh, but you know it, and, yes. and, I, and that's, that's what's important. And of course, Alexander, yes. you're, you're keeping it alive. Now, if you want to go along to this exhibition, it is free. It opens on Friday, doesn't it, Alexander? Yes, it does. And yes. it's for five days. It's running up until the 8th of September. Yep, that's right. Uh, and you go into the bake and turn left up the escalator there, and you'll see the, the exhibition there. Um, I would encourage you to go. Uh, and, and, and as you look at those pictures, and particularly try and, try and pick out the ones from Chile, uh, and let your mind turn to the terrible injustice, of course, that there is in the world. There's injustice in the world right now. Um, but it's people who have the courage to stand up, to take a stand, to be able to challenge injustice that make the world a better place. So if you go along to that exhibition, you'll be making your stand. You'll be saying, I want to be identified uh, with this type of stand and, and, and let your, uh, your creative juices flow you know, as you, as you look at that exhibition. And also, I know Alexander would be absolutely delighted if you went to his website uh, where you can see samples of the, um, of the work. And uh, that uh, particular website is www.zanderartwork.com. Now, the Zander is spelled Z-A-N-D-E-R, artwork.com. Uh, and you'll be, get, get some inspiration there. And you're doing an exhibition, of course, in the future in London, aren't you? Yeah, the, the Sins of the World will hit London and Glasgow at some point, probably ah, next Glasgow's year. Ah, Glasgow's not going to miss out. <laughs> <That can't>. <laughs> <laughs> well, finally, uh, and Violetta, what would you like to say before we, we, we close this part of the programme? And uh, it's, it's been a real privilege to have you here. Thank you. And I know you're going to be coming down again to see the exhibition. Um, final comments. Final comment, I just want to thank Alexander. Thank you. Wonderful <laughs> work he's been doing, and his, his, his paintings are opening people's eyes. He's, he's wonderful, and I really, really thank you, Alexander, for doing this for, for, for our country, for our family. Thank you're, you very much. You're very welcome. I'd like to also say I'm very proud of my Aunt Valetta being here. Um, I can tell that. She's a highlight. <laughs> <laughs> but it's really great, isn't it, to be proud of your heritage, you know, and, uh, and, and, and even though you, you've never been to Chile, yeah. it's, it's really quite refreshing to, 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 to hear that you know where your identity lies. And, of course, clearly you two are close. Yeah, very close. Yeah, so, <laughs> so thank you both. And I will finish uh, this part of the program today uh, with, I think, an appropriate track. It's simply this. Uh, Andre let us, Dad didn't do this. He never stopped believing. So don't stop believing. Right. I get my feel. Everybody wants. Twenty four hours a day. This is Hope FM, life changing radio. Well, I'll be back with you tomorrow for breakfast, but just now, let's continue with the afternoon siesta. And don't forget, check out that exhibition, Sins of the World, 1st to the 8th of September at the BIC right here in Bournemouth. I may see you there. Bye-bye for now.